Hello and welcome to another episode of Friday Minis. Today, we're talking about power. Well, the charging power variety. This started off as the desire to explain the term trickle charging, and then the realization of people not really using the term correctly these days. So we're going to handle this topic from scratch. I'm going to talk about just charging in general. We're going to move on to look at trickle charging. And finally, we're going to move on to USB charging. And of course, the intricacies behind USB charging. But then, well, you pretty much know what charging is. It's just, you know, filling up a battery with power. But trickle charging is what's interesting. Nowadays, people actually refer to USB charging as trickle charging, and that's not entirely accurate. What trickle charging is, is if you actually have your phone plugged in, it's already charged to 100%, but you decide not to remove it from the charger, you're just gonna, I don't know, continue playing Angry Birds. That is when trickle charging is happening. Your battery is essentially at 100%, but it's being used. At the same time, it is also being charged. Trickle charging, in fact, refers to when your charger is just topping up enough energy to keep your battery at 100%. So essentially, the amount of energy coming in is equivalent to the amount of energy being used. So at the end of the day, for the battery, things remain at 100%. It is almost like you're powering your phone with the outlet. What people sometimes call trickle charging today is actually USB charging. Now, here's the deal. USB essentially has four pins. Two of the pins are actually providing a 5 volt power to your device, whereas the other two pins are actually for data transfer. According to the standard, USB ports will only provide up to 500 milliamps of power. Most phones actually can use that to charge, but not efficiently. My phone, for example, uses 1000 milliamps, in other words, 1 amp, to charge. To fit the specification, when a phone is actually connected to a USB port, it only draws up to 500 milliamps of power. Do note that this is a decision made by the phone, not the computer. And of course, I believe the motivation is to actually not put too much stress on your computer's power unit. When your phone is actually connected to a USB charger on a wall outlet, it's going to happily draw an entire amp of current if it needs it. But the question is, how does the phone tell? How does the phone tell what it's plugged into? You see, when your phone is connected to a computer, it can see data transfer. So essentially, a phone decides that what it's plugged into is a computer if there is data transfer. Obviously, there isn't data transfer with a wall plug. So now, let's say you are confident in your power unit and you decide you want your phone to actually draw an entire amp from your computer. The only way you can do this is to actually cut off the data transfer. There are some cables labeled as fast charging cables, where essentially they have the data pins shorted. What this means is when your computer tries to send data to your phone or vice versa, the data will never get through because the pins are shorter. The phone, seeing no data coming in, decides that this is probably a wall outlet and just draws however much current it needs. This then also answers the question of why phones charge slower over USB and of course also the question of how to make it go faster. Most importantly however, this answers the question of is this called trickle charging? The answer being no, this is not trickle charging, this is the intricacies of USB charging. So I guess just a whole bunch of information just thrown at you. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. But that's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Don't forget to like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. You're watching 0612TV.